Marcello, come here. Hurry up. It's Sunday morning on CBS. Here again is Mo Rocco. That was Swedish bombshell Anita Ekberg cavorting in Rome's Trevi Fountain in Fellini's La Dolce Vita. Turns out the good life is still very much in existence here, and we found it. Just over a half mile from the Trevi Fountain, in the center of Rome, is Villa Aurora. <laughs> The villa was built in the year 1570. Good morning, Princess Rita. And is currently presided over by a princess. Your full name is? Rita Boncompagni Ludovisi, Principessa di Pimbino. But I can just call you Princess Rita. You can just call me Rita. <laughs> OK. So there's really not any part of this villa that a master didn't have a hand in. True. Around every corner here, there's something astonishing. Now you're going to see something very special. Um, this is the only ceiling painting ever done by Caravaggio. It is not a fresco. It's an oil on plaster painting. This is Jupiter, Neptune, and Pluto. And Caravaggio painted this when he was 23 in 1597. He put his own face and his own body on each one of these figures. And this is uh, Caesar Augustus from 2 AD. And I told my husband, if we had this in New York, it'd be in the middle of our living room. It's been here for centuries, just sitting there. And out in the garden, in all his glory. This is a Michelangelo. It was behind a tree when we were uh, beginning to restore the house. And then the tree died, and the fig leaf came off. And now I can see why it was behind a tree. I'm pretty sure we can't show this on CBS. Probably not. If the Michelangelo is a bit scandalous, well, the princess is no stranger to scandal. Today, you're Princess Rita. You became famous as Rita Genret. Yes. Princess Rita grew up as Rita Carpenter on a ranch in Texas. An interest in politics took her to Washington in her early 20s. And right off the bat, she fell in love with her soon-to-be husband. My first day there, I met John. My John ex-husband, John Genret. John Genret was a Democratic congressman from South Carolina, but not for long. In 1980, the FBI ran a sting operation called Abscam. Members of Congress were enticed with bribes from someone dressed up as an Arab sheikh. Congressman Genret could be heard on surveillance tape seeming to welcome a $50,000 payoff. I got larceny in my blood. I'd take it in a goddamn minute. Okay. I mean, I stood by him during the trial and all of that, which was tremendously painful. It was shocking, actually. But the shocks were only beginning. Saying she needed the money, the congressman's wife displayed more than her independence. I remember 1981 and the sensation. The brouhaha. <laughs> your appearance in Playboy. Yes, I know. So you know that people are saying that your husband sold his public trust and now you're selling sex. How do you mm. respond? Well, that's in the eye of the beholder, in my opinion. That's their problem. That's not mine. And they were very demure photos. I mean, it wasn't explicit. They were very covered and such as that. But what I really regret is my dad called me and he said, you didn't post for Playboy, did you? And I said, well, it's not town and country, Daddy. <laughs> you know, it's, it's a... Adding to the scandal, she claimed in the Playboy article that she and her husband once had their own private filibuster on the hallowed grounds of Congress. We did not make love on the Capitol steps. It, we had just gotten married, and um, they were in session, and he called me to have dinner with him in the congressional dining room. And then we just went over behind the columns, and, and he kissed me, and it was a passionate moment, but it was not, uh, we did not make love on the Capitol steps, and we did not. Obviously, John Genret went to jail, said, and the couple divorced. The tape, Along the way, Rita Genret tried out enough careers to last most people a lifetime. Baby, do you love me? A little singing. Baby, do you miss me? A little acting. I don't know, Joe. I really don't feel good about this. Then she landed in Manhattan real estate meeting Donald Trump when she helped broker his purchase of the General Motors building in 1998. 
He was very friendly, very congenial. He took a magazine and put it up on his desk, and he said, you know, I'm worth $3.5 billion. And so I thought, what do I say? You know, what, right. do, I what say? do you say to that? I said, how lovely for you. I didn't know what to say. I said, how wonderful. <laughs> Real estate would lead her to Italy five years later, when an Italian prince wanted to build a hotel. She flashed back to a childhood trip to Rome and that world famous Trevi Fountain. So it was 51 years ago 51 that you came. 51 years ago. I came here when I was 16, my sister, and uh, I made a wish. I fell in love with Rome and I said, I hope that I move to Rome and I marry an Italian and live there forever. The prince she came to see was Prince Niccolò Boncompagni Ludovisi, a direct descendant of Pope Gregory XIII. Tell me about the moment you laid eyes on Rita. Oh, <laughs> that's a moment I will never forget. I was shocked, but in a positive way. I was breathless. It was a fairy tale come true. And just like in the fairy tales, eight years ago, the princess married the prince yeah. and moved into his castle. What do you use this room for now? We use it, sometimes I do my yoga here. <laughs> and I, and I, yeah, I do. And I look up at it and I find new things all the time. Please come in. The villa is listed as a national monument, hence the occasional tour. Stand just beneath the Sarla Grotesque, you see? That turn, 360 degrees. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Isn't that astonishing? Oh. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> yes, the Italians know something about the good life. And turning into a princess doesn't hurt. And you're just a picture of happiness. Thank you. Oh yeah, yeah. Thank God. I can only thank God. Me too. Me too. Yeah, kiss him again. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I love him. <laughs>